So I, I, like I was saying, I'm Dr. Segal Klipstein from Invia Fertility, and we're local in uh, suburban Chicago. We have four offices around town. And uh, we are a fertility center. We're an IVF center. We're also uh, recruit and screen our own egg donors, which is a little bit different from the other uh, egg donor agencies in town because we do the medical screening as well as the kind of social screening of the egg donors. Um, so let me talk a little bit about the process which is really the first half of what you'll be doing, which is the embryo creation. Um, so before really anything happens, and sometimes before you even look for a surrogate, you, you know, you of course need the embryos. And for many of our couples um, and single men, what, we, what they do is they pick a, an egg donor, um, they decide who's going to fertilize the sperm, they make the embryos, and then they go on a search for the surrogate. Um, and sometimes that works better, and you don't have to coordinate everything, and it, um, it makes the process a little bit more... Uh, uh, manageable because you break it up into smaller pieces. So in slide number two you can see here um, this is just kind of what the process looks like for the egg donor. <laughs> so she gets paid a bunch of money but she also goes through quite a bit of, of time and effort and so um, she does some fertility injections for about 10 days. The ovaries instead of making one egg make lots of eggs. Um, those eggs get removed and then they get fertilized with sperm. And you can see in picture six the egg and the sperm nuclei meet. We grow the embryos for about five days, and then they look like this, this number seven in this second slide here. These embryos are then frozen, and they can be frozen essentially indefinitely, at least 20 years, probably much more than that, um, longer than you'll need them. Then the next big decision you have to make is how do you fertilize those eggs? So for a lot of our couples, they split the eggs in half, and um, each uh, guy contributes sperm to half the eggs. Um, the difficulty sometimes comes in when there's not an even number of eggs, so who gets the extra egg, right? Um, and we've had that conversation more than once. Some of you in the room know. Um, and uh, so once that happens, the embryos develop. We hopefully make embryos, you know, at least one from each of your sperm, and then we have those for later. Um, there's been a big push across the country not to have uh, twins, just because it's much higher risk for the babies, and then, of course, it's harder to bring twins home when you don't have any babies, you don't know this, but, but two babies crying is much harder, I think, than one in the middle of the night. But, um, but the risk to the surrogate a little higher, the risk to the babies being born early and having problems are much higher, and the goal we always have is to have one healthy pregnancy at a time. I think the complication comes in is that it gets much more expensive to have two babies one at a time than two together, um, and that's a decision that, you know, is we do a lot of soul searching in terms of that decision. I will say that over the past five or seven years, we've done ex almost exclusively single embryo transfers into our surrogates. So, um, and when we don't, we usually get twins. So, um, so that's something to think about. Um, in page five, what's interesting here um, is that, you know, you think you're gonna get all these eggs and it's true, but not every egg becomes an embryo. So you might get 10 or 15 eggs, and of those eggs, not all of them will fertilize, and not all the eggs that fertilize will make it to this blastocyst phase of development. But the good news is those embryos that make it to that last phase have a 70% chance of making a baby. If you think about it, sex in the bedroom with a heterosexual couple, in the movies, everybody gets pregnant the first time they try. In reality, it's only 15%. So one egg gives you 10 or 15% chance in nature. Here, we're getting a lot more eggs, you're not going to end up with as many embryos as you have eggs. You're going to end up with less embryos, but those are going to be really good quality and very high chance of, of um, implanting. Um, you can actually use eggs that are frozen as well. So there are some, uh, so we have an egg donor basically program where we, you pick an egg donor, you, she gets stimulated, you get all of her eggs, um, which is nice. The egg banks only give you five or six eggs. Um, the downside of that is that you may then end up with less embryos than you'd like. Um, and the cost is really not that much lower. So while um, it seems like a nice idea and the eggs are already frozen, um, cost-wise it usually doesn't, doesn't actually make sense um, despite what the egg banks will tell you. So we can certainly talk about that. Um, how do we pick the best embryo? If you look at page, slide seven and eight, um, two options. One is just looking at the embryo, that's called morphology. And we look at what the inner cell mass looks like, what the <laughs> cavity looks like, and we have a sense of what looks pretty. Kelly is our embryologist here. Um, and she can answer any questions you have, but she looks very carefully at these embryos and tells us exactly which ones are uh, the most likely to implant. But if you want to look one step deeper, when you're looking at the embryo, you can just say it's a pretty embryo, but you can't say anything about the chromosomes. So what you can do is you can take a few cells here from, uh, from the outside of the embryo, not the cells that become the baby, and you can test them. Um, the benefit of that is that it increases your chance of pregnancy a little bit. With our donor egg embryos, the, donor egg, the egg donors are very young, so you can test the embryos, but the chance of success, you know, in a woman who's 40 donating her eggs, 
you get a much better chance of success because a very small percentage of those eggs that she makes are going to be normal. With these young egg donors, and usually they're under 30, um, the majority of their embryos that they make are going to be chromosomally normal, so there's not necessarily a very compelling reason. So it might give you, you know, you might go from a 60% per embryo chance of success to a 70. Maybe it's worth it for you, but we often recommend not to do the genetic testing, um, which is, I think, different from what you might hear in some of the other talks. Um, but if you were to do the testing, you can look at number nine here. You just take a few cells from the embryo. It generally does not harm the embryo. Um, and uh, we can actually test them very nicely. You'll also know, for example, things like does the embryo have Down syndrome? Is it a male or a female? So you'll have a lot more information. Um, and if you want that information up front, it's nice to have. With the embryos coming from women who are so young, the risk of Down syndrome is like one in a thousand, something on that order of magnitude. So not super high. Um, we really don't see it that often, but it's just something to think about. Um, so what are our success rates? So I just pulled out some national uh, data just to give you an, a sense. Um, if you look at that, no, that slide 11, the pregnancy rate, if you're using a gestational carrier and a donor egg, um, and you're transferring one embryo at a time, 66%. If you transfer two embryos, it's a little bit closer to 70%, but it's not even a 5% difference. The difference is in that second line in the twin rate, when you put in one embryo, there's a couple percent chance that that embryo splits into two and you'll have identical twins. That can happen. But when you put in two embryos, at least half the time with these young donor eggs and the surrogate being so healthy, at least half the time you get twins and sometimes you get triplets. And so that's very, you know, you don't want to get more than you bargained for. I mean, you think, you know, you get more for your money, but it's got to help you if you're uh, going home with triplets, so, you know. Um, and then in terms of the chance that the babies will go full term, if you have a single embryo, you know, 85% will be delivered at term, and those that aren't term maybe a little bit early. When you're looking at two embryos and you have twins, only, you know, a quarter of them, more than a quarter, will be delivered early, and there are a lot of complications with that. And so to have two babies that have health issues, potentially, for sure, at the beginning of life and potentially for the whole entire lives, you know, it, it's a much bigger cost than the cost of going through another surrogacy journey. So it's just something to keep in mind. Like I said, we often uh, talk about doing twins. We rarely do do transfer to, um, but it's something that, that we, we think about with everyone. So kind of what do you do? Um, it may depend on how many embryos you have. If you have a limited number, it may not make sense to test them. Um, if you have a very young donor, it may not make sense to test them. Like I said, it doesn't increase your chance that much. Um, overall success rates are excellent, so whatever you do, the chances are that you'll end up with babies at the end of it. Um, and we always say that it's safest to transfer one at a time just because our success rates are so excellent with that. So I wanted to leave time for questions and see, yeah. Um, so for some of us who have like a specific reason we want to do twins, mm -hmm. like I, I'd like to know a little bit more about sort of what the risks are, mm -hmm. like what can go wrong, you know. Like, so this, like if it's yeah. premature birth, like some things can go wrong, but it's probably fine, I assume. Like so 10% of twins that deliver early have problems like cerebral palsy, hearing problems, breathing problems. I mean, then these are, can be like blindness, deafness. So these are things that can be with them forever, whether it's mental or physical, you know, delays. So, and, and oftentimes it means lots of doctor's visits, possibly surgeries, you know, attention to, to their health care. All, you know, on an ongoing basis. So you're, you know, three quarters of the twins do fine, but for the one quarter that don't do fine, you don't know which slide of the coin you're going to be on, and there's not any good way to predict who's going to deliver early. So yes, if you pick a surrogate who's had twins before, perhaps, or who's had lots of, you know, many full-term big babies, maybe that's a better choice. But you still, you cannot know who those those women are that are going to deliver early. Um, there's a huge area of research into you know why women go into labor, why they go into labor early. We don't really know what triggers it. We know that the more you stretch the uterus essentially, right, the bigger the uterus gets with the twins, the more likely it is to say, we're done, you know, I've reached a certain size, these babies have to come out. So that's where the risks come in and they're just not predictable. So it's a little bit playing with fire. But yes, if you have reasons why you, you know you want to have twins, I'm not saying we don't do it, we certainly do it, we've done it in the past. We used to transfer two embryos in everyone not that long ago. Um, it's not what we recommend, but it doesn't mean it can't happen. It's just that the surrogate has to agree, you have to agree. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions? Done such a good job of answering everything, huh? <laughs> Anything specific? All right, thank you guys. If you have any questions, we have pamphlets, handouts here. Um, our information is on these handouts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
So we don't have as many as some of the egg donor agencies, but all of our egg donors are fully screened. So they've gone through a psychological evaluation, genetic testing for 283 diseases. They've gone through a medical screening. They've met with a physician. So they've done all the legwork. What we find sometimes with the agencies is that someone will come in with a donor that they love, um, and we look at their ovaries and we're like, oh, not that many follicles. We just don't think this donor is going to make a lot of eggs for you. Or like, she's just a little quirky. You know, we just think there's some personality issues. So they are pre-screened. So I think that is, that is a benefit. But because of that, we only accept about 5% of donors that apply. So we're very selective. But the donors that we have are very high quality and will do good work for you guys. So. Um, yeah, and we have a, some of them, we have some limited information. We're very, you know, uh, it's very important for us to maintain privacy for everyone. Um, but certainly if you email us, Vicki is our egg donor coordinator, and uh, she will email you, send you messages, whatever you need. Yes, she will give you profiles, pictures. So yes, we can um, definitely share that with you. All right, thank you very much.